Okay, I am joined right now by the lovely and amazing Kate Sobrano. How are you going, Kate? <laughs> I'm happy to be equally joined by the wonderful and the <laughs> devastatingly clever Ashton <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, um, you know, th- this is uh, the lockdown series. And um, I mean, I was just thinking about some of the positives. I'm encouraging everybody to look for silver linings, but you were busy recording or doing something and we missed we you we didn't get to start right on time so i had chan- a chance in the studio to go do the dishes and, <laughs> <laughs> and impress my wife and then come back into the studio um so you know that's the kind of things that and then i was um just doing a um, instagram for socials about something and then some chickens ran onto my deck uh, onto my deck and I was booting them away and it's just like the work the work home life thing has changed a lot these days hey it has and I'm often reminded of the 50s in this time I um I've just started being doing some live reading with some friends of mine I, I basically recruited every artist I know who's out of a job to do artful things so wow. I've got a lot of actors and singers from the stage who are doing uh, readings from George Orwell's Animal Farm. Wow. So we, and we've got a girl who was a fan in, in London who does um, signing. So she signs it all for us. And we just do that each day because, because funnily enough, I read the preface to the novel and he said um, it was post the war and he felt that there had to be some policy put in place that he could explore with people to describe what he thought was what was ailing the world which was humans yeah <laughs> agreed and, yeah. <laughs> and so he used the fantastic analogy of the of the animal farm and all the politics and the substrata of politics and you know all the variety of different people and uh individuals within the animals and then he used that as a sort of like a political uh, platform. Yeah. So I thought, what, a, what an amazing thing. Here we are. We're not in a world war, but mm. it has a somewhat lukewarm Cold War feeling yeah. to me. Yeah. And that, uh, and then I think we need to have our wits about us, especially in the departments of the arts, to find a way to de- describe it so that we can entice uh, general community to have a look at it from every angle and discover well, which way are we all just being corralled into the pen again? Mm. Yeah, I know. It's a, it feels, um, it's a weird time. Oh my God. I just, I just flip around. You know, one thing that I'm doing is um, not allowing myself to be polarized yet <laughs> in any way. I just can't work out what's actually going on, to be honest. Um, well, I certainly don't get political. I mean, I agree with you. I, I'm not, I, I refuse to uh, be scooped up for anyone's um, political or politicising or soapboxing or whatever, because I know that there are, there are many degrees to which there's a lot of this that's unseen to us. Mm, absolutely. I see, and, and when artists do that, I, I kind of think I get a bit embarrassed for some sometimes for them because then the pole swings to the other side or, you know, and I, and I feel like the artists themselves should be the, uh, the, the above in, in not, not above society, but they need to be like that little position above um, the atmosphere, the, the temperature, the mercury and just, get into that little space that's got no gravity and look and observe what's happening, write about it, document Mm. it, research it, find Mm. out how they want to talk about it. In in fact, Ash, today I I had, I woke up this morning and I was feeling uh, a bit low, Mm. a bit bit tired of being stuck in my house actually. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just feeling just, uh, well, I suppose you could call it a little depressed actually. And Mm -hmm. I just, and I, and I just by chance um, hit on Bob Dylan's thank you speech for the um, the recent award he got for the uh, Pulitzer Prize. Have right. you ever heard his speech? No, no. It's beautiful. Really? And I will have to link to it. 
Yeah. You sh- yeah, let's do that. And uh, the thing that came out of it, which was really important, which is, again, why I'm into this George Orwell thing, is that um, literature, and especially fine literature, will give you a conversation. It'll give you a platform, something to compare it to when there's nothing to compare it to in real life. So, so tease that out, yeah. sorry, for, for me. Yeah. T- talk no, me through I will. it again. Well, for instance, if you said to a child, um, you're going to need to economise on what you're eating because we may not be able to get that product in, mm. uh, you know, for the next six weeks. And kids go, what? Mm. But you could, you went out and had plenty of that last week. Mm. Why can't we suddenly have it? Mm. And you go, well, because there's going to be rationing and there's going to be other things. And, you know, um, so instead, it gave Ah, affect us. Sorry, <laughs> someone's calling in. Excuse oh, okay. me. So no, instead, no, I, I should. It, so so instead, I gave her a book about um, the history of um, the history of community and how sometimes with the different seasons, certain foods will come into season, and you mm. can have them in plentiful abundance. Mm. And then when the season goes out there's no longer that available and you have mm. to just decide. So I, I'm trying to give her something to compare it to, an experience she hasn't lived through, mm. but through literature she could compare it to. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And so Bob was saying um, his written work, his songs, uh, he was merely a messenger, but mm. he, was, he was involving early authors into his work, people who'd mm. written Moby Dick, for instance, mm. or the... Uh, um, the Odyssey, or um, what other what other novels did he mention? Um, oh, some terrific, terrific novels, and he was using that platform to say, "I didn't live through those wars, but I mm. could definitely write like a war journalist mm. after reading those books." Mm. Yeah, and wow. and I think that we as musicians have a responsibility to talk about our times. Yeah. So in a way, I mean, I've got a thing that springs to mind for me i i've got something um coming out mid-year i did a, a blues album with josh teskey yeah, um, oh God. amazing oh my singer God. <laughs> amazing. No, oh my god you guys just the combination <laughs> of the two of you uh, i think i will have died and gone to heaven uh, uh, i thought that when i was in the studio oh, with him oh my um, gosh but i found it really um inspiring to write for such a great amazing blues singer I'm um, sure he felt the same about you. Ah. <laughs> I'm um, sure of uh, it. Uh, no, I, to me, it was just so in, in, it was an inspiring thing. It was really easy to write. But I had this um, song that we put in. We sort of reworked. It was an older one. I did it for an, the album before, actually. But it was about the floods up here in northern New South Wales. And you had to wait um, to, get, um, to get down the freeway. You had to check out the tide guide. Wow. Because the tide had a bearing on, I mean, the freeways way inland. Wow. Um, wow. So I put details like that in there. And yeah. to me, I was drawing on an old blues tradition, actually, that there's yeah. all, they always talk about floods and fires yes. and it's a documentary. Exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly what Dylan was saying too. He said, you knew Mary was bad because Joe had had her on the the tractor at the back of the farm you know like you knew that the you knew you knew that the you knew that the the the, the still um was safe because it had been buried six feet deep where yeah. later joe mason was found next to his you know i mean that they are uh, they were literal stories yeah. about um yeah heavy 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 from pennsylvania they were uh the the floods in northern northern australia i mean mm. i, I actually <laughs> the problem with um, australian music isn't it to, it seems to me is that um we've deferred our uh geography within us like our our, our bloodline we've yeah. deferred that for someone else's story and have been yeah. imitating other people's history when in yeah. actual fact we need to discover what it is what is it that makes us so very australian yeah and you know who are we listening to when the ghosts tell us stories who well which ghosts are we listening to we're yeah. listening to uh, yeah 
Yeah, that's a big issue. Um, like say for somebody like me, when you when you're so influenced by American music, you know, blues and stuff. Yeah. And I am hearing you. Uh, I was going to say, uh, how's this for an old old uh, some old <laughs> terminology? I'm hearing you on FM. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> on the wireless, I'm hearing, I'm you, hearing you on 5G. On the <laughs> I better, not, I'm hearing you on 5G. That no, I better not say. No, no um, please, let's uh, not ever uh, hear each other on that. <laughs> I want to move to wherever you go that doesn't have it. Does it have right? 5G? Yeah. Um, um, but I actually grew up um on uh listening to a lot of Australiana and yeah. um my parents and so funny my dad he's an immigrant from South Africa and just got way into like real, I just guess he had just embraced, he embraced this country and really got into red gum, John Williamson and my kid and my parents used to listen to a lot of banjo Patterson um, oh, yeah. poems put to um, put to music and stuff. So oh. I have this one side of my childhood that's got like all of these really Australian stories. So yeah. really hearing you with that thing. And there's that disconnect between the musical influence yeah. and, the, and the actual, you know, those lyrics that are got a lot of um, well, time I and place in this country. Yeah. You might feel the same way as me sometimes though, in our contemporary culture, when we want to go there, um, there's a, there's a, there's a also like, cause I listen to Archie Roach or I listen to. Oh, I love Archie uh, Roach. Yeah. No, I totally like some great things. And then I feel like if I want to resound in that or try to plumb that seam of gold where they're talking about the land and then I go, oh, am I, tri- am I actually yet again stealing something that's been stolen from them? You know, like there's, there's a uh, great deal, of, you know. You, cultural you, appropriate, uh, what is approach, it? Uh, 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 appropriation. Uh, appropriation it's like you yeah. know seeing people who could go oh, i can chuck a few dots on canvas yeah this should suffice but it doesn't yeah. but actually i think i've already I've, I've i've kind of blown um that i've got i've blown that debate out of me because i think that people know the difference when you're being genuine and when you when you're actually desiring authenticity and you're not desiring to imitate i mean I'd say that you and I, I can pretty much, and certainly John Butler as well, I don't think of anyone that I can hear in the way we perform. We sound like a lot of people, but we don't sound specifically like we've gone after one journey yeah, and tried absolutely. to be that. Yeah. I think we're very much ourselves, thank God. Yeah, I really respect, I so respect that about you and people can tell whenever you're doing anything that it's genuine. It comes, you know, from you and, and you know, like I'm, for myself sometimes i'm full of doubt <laughs> but i never oh, doubt yeah. my authenticity because i just jump mm, up there and i'm just no. your me, heart is so, so full <laughs> thanks that's nice. you, oh and mm. and i think i think don't you agree that the the fact that we were raised on live performance mm. is uh has always been for me the measure of my success was mm. whether my communication was felt by people rather than just uh, um, commercially mm. uh, bought, you know, sure, mm. there are stats and mm. other things which are lovely, which show when people mm. are enjoying your music, but mm. I'm a bit of a dolphin. I'm sure you're the same. Mm. I ping out little sonars in a room. <laughs> yeah. And you feel the room mm. and it fills you like a, like in cocoon when all mm. of the adults jumped into the pool. Do you know mm. what I mean by that? Totally. You feel... <laughs> mm. <laughs> you, you you actually feel like you've taken on a bit of them mm. and in exchange, you know, they've offered you themselves, their heart, mm. their souls. Mm. And in exchange, all you had to do was give them music for the night or entertainment. Mm. And they gave mm. you all of that. Mm. Um, that. I think that that makes us uh, accountable every time mm. we perform. Mm. Mm. Uh, for people who are listening to this, uh, Kate is the master of this. Uh, you know, you jumped up with me. We had a jam at uh, that gig at the River Stage. And I was like, wow, <laughs> you really? Because, you know, that's the other thing. When you, you see musicians, you hear musicians, that's one thing. But I really only really know how they roll once I jam with them. Yeah. And then you really feel it. And, yeah, you're 
command in a really good way of the stage and the way you just brought everything. And I didn't realize you were so jammy too, the way you like, Oh, I was spontaneous. Ah, I'm a jam girl. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm kind of half hoping Ash that from your, mm. your podcasts mm. that um, you will pull together a, um, what was the group with um, Tom Petty and George Harrison and oh, like a tra- um, <laughs> traveling I, can, Woolberries. <laughs> can I and and if you ever if you ever if you ever want a um, a Joan Joan or someone in there or one of the chicks that was on the big you know that she wasn't in the traveling Woolberries, I would like to be one of the, the you're in the in the traveling <laughs> Woolberries. You and John Butler. Yeah. <laughs> See, to me, the the beauty of jamming is this, and it's something that. I, I, it's almost like it's a, it's a, it's become, it's, it's almost become like a, um, an ancestral thing that needs to be taught. Like it's, it's beyond karaoke. It's beyond just singing to someone else's track. It's beyond the isolation of a, of a cell phone and doing a selfie. It's a, um, it's, it's being able to know when the other person you're performing with is feeling it, mm. feeling the release mm. and allowing them the full expression of their release. Mm. And then knowing that you can then also release without any fear that either they're going to be embarrassed by you or they're going to reject you or they're going to wish that you'd shut up. <laughs> you know, it's one of those places where everyone lays down their tools and they say, this is what I have to offer tonight. Mm. And I really, and I sincerely mean it. Like, I um I had an embarrassing thing I told someone about the other day, which was actually quite the opposite to our experience. Yeah. See, you and I, it was like someone threw petrol at us and we just turned into a bonfire. Like it yeah. was like poof, like this, yeah. right? But then on another horrible instance when I hadn't <laughs> That's what I love to hear about. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hadn't been invited on a jam that was obviously a very specific one. I didn't realise, and I was sitting in an audience with the, the Finn brothers, and I'll, mm. and I'll name them, even though that they, <laughs> this is not by any means meant to be harmful to them, but <laughs> they, they reached into the audience and said, um, oh, we have a very special singer in the audience tonight, and we'd love very much to invite her in and, and have a bit of a sing on this our song, Weather With You. And, and they went like, so I jumped out of my seat because they were indicating to me, ran onto the stage, and I was just oh, like such... Wow, thank you so much. I I I love this song and they're both looking at me like and so I was like, great. So that's off we go. And I'd go to sing or I'd try to improvise what I thought was a harmony and turn, and Neil would turn and go, that's that's not what um, Okay. Gee, this is not a very welcoming experience. I don't really feel like I've anything yet. So anyway, I kind of thanked everyone and sheepishly walked back to my seat. And as I was walking back to the table, I realised that just behind me was one of New Zealand's most famous singers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I, I really wanted to just pick up my handbag and walk straight out the room and never ever come back. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it was so terrible. Oh my God. So it's that thing where somebody's waving to you and you wave back, but they're actually waving to the somebody else. <laughs> That's got to oh. be in a movie. Oh, look, I hope it. <laughs> I, 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 I've only just started discussing it. I thought I had professional amnesia and I'd forgotten it because I couldn't, I, I was so, I was, I was so ashamed of my enthusiasm. But then, but, <laughs> You're not small. You're not happens. small though. That's it. Sorry. I hate to, yeah. uh, it, but like you would think, they're looking at you, you would think, okay, cool, let's do it. This is great. Look, I love I that song. She, well, except she's probably was as famous as Dame Kiri Takanawa. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my like, God. it's like jumping up at the Oscars when you think yeah. your name's been called and go yeah. and receive it, only to go, oh my God, I misheard it. I'm sorry, I thought you said, you said mate, <laughs> I got K. Uh, anyway, but uh, when our, which, when you AB it to our experience, Ash, um, yeah. I was dying to meet you because I'd met your mum at school. At oh, yeah, school yeah, yeah. And she said, my son, you know, he's a very good blues player. And you sort of go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I'm sure he's lovely. You know, every mother says that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he said, she said, no, no, he's, he's, he's quite a special cat. You should check him out. And I was like, oh, holy <laughs> shit. And I did. And, I, and she wasn't wrong. And then that was the first time I met you. 
Yeah, yeah. Because we sort of almost met on stage. Yeah, yeah, that's classic. And it, oh, well, I felt like I knew you already. But then I did know you already because I was watching you when you know way <laughs> back in the day. You know, yeah, <laughs> you got to say my dad. You were you. My dad's such a big fan. That's what you meant to say. Because at my age, most people come up to me and they go, "Oh my god, my dad loves you." <laughs> my grand, no, no, my <laughs> grandfather's a huge fan. That's <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> I was going to actually ask you about that because like, look, you're so genuine and you're so real and we're here talking about jamming and everything, but you've been on the top of, of a scene that is kind of, I view it as the opposite, like a massive pop star. So like, I mean, what was that world like when we're talking about these genuine things, authenticity, were there ever any challenges in that way? Or were you exactly the same as you are now in terms of, how you performed, how was, how was uh, it? I think I, look, to be honest, I, I, I never really knew if I was ever on the top of anywhere. I knew that I was desiring to be someplace I never was. I knew that my whole, um, if I had had an autobiography written, it probably would have had a title called Hurry Up, I Can't See Where I'm Going because wow. I'm projecting forward all the time. Uh, very, I, the classic. Exactly. And I very rarely bring stuff with me. Like, for instance, I never go and watch anything I've just shot or done, ever. Wow. And I very rarely listen to records I've made, too. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't like, it's almost like I find it uh, counterintuitive to where I'm headed, to see where I've been. Mm. Uh, It seems to keep me locked into some experience somewhere. And I'm not free to imagine where I want to go next. It's like, you know, Michael Looney had that beautiful drawing with the lion becoming the path that he was walking on. Oh, so right. Came from yeah. his head and became the path that he was actually walking on. Yeah, And right. I feel that that's actually a really great metaphor for the way I, I feel about music. I'm actually not trying to actually get anywhere specific, but mm. it's, it's the getting there that I find thrilling. Mm. Mm. So to answer your question about pop and other things... I came from an era where there was no so there were no divisions. This was pre MTV. Mm. We didn't even have categories. It was just music. Yeah, yeah. And quite literally, that's how old I am. I mean, mm. you could you could say rock and roll was the distinction between, you know, rock, pop, and soul. Yeah. Um, or you could say there was jazz, which was a very distinct difference, mm. and classical. So there was mm. jazz, classic, and rock. Right. And uh, I was raised on a diet of, you know, Led Zeppelin, Annie Lennox, um, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, and Eurythmics, you yeah. know, like, uh, and David Bowie. So, mm. all in all, it was a, um, it was a, it was quite a, it was quite a graceful time. It seemed to use less words and just more um, demonstration to express mm. yourself as an artist. You could just demonstrate what you were interested in. And that was quite enough. Mm. Mm. Wow. Opposite mm. to me. I use a lot of words. <laughs> you, no, do you know what? I, I know uh, you, you might, but it's funny. I find your playing, well, like in the great, one day I, I met the great B.B. King. Oh, my God. And I was standing outside the guitar centre. Uh, and I, this refers to you, so in case it just sounds like I'm going on. Um, but it was... I, I very rarely ask for people's autographs, right? Because mm. I feel like it's a bit, uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's, I don't, I don't know why. I get shy. Mm. But I'll ask for autographs on behalf of my brother, who, as you know, is a great guitarist. Mm. Oh, yeah, and I, yeah. Yeah, saw B.B. King outside the Guitar Centre on Sunset Boulevard, and he's just midway in the mouth of getting a hamburger. I said, <laughs> oh, excuse me, Mr. King, Mr. King, I'm sorry, I won't take you for any much of your time. You know, he had to lay his mm. hamburger down. And, and I just said to him, man, Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, would you please sign this for my brother? And he, which he did, and he was graceful. And he actually he murmured something, but there were no words. Mm. And then I went and picked up his videos and started YouTubing him mercilessly and watching and watching again. Oh, the conversation he has with his guitar. Yeah, yeah. I hear you loud and clear, Ash Donald. I mean, <laughs> I, we we chat and talk. In fact, I find you quite. Um, like, look at me, I'm, I'm just taking over this entire conversation. Whereas when you play, I'm quite happy if you just talk to me for the rest of time. What, what do you mean, talking? 
Yeah, you're that, right. Yeah, I love, yeah, I well, hear, that's a high compliment hear, to a blues player. Oh, I hear yeah. your conversation. It is loud and clear. <laughs> I hear, I, I almost like John Bonham. I know what song he's singing, even though there's no melody. Yeah, right. I, yeah, yeah. I know when you're playing, I know the conversation. It's massive discussions. It's just, we're talking about galaxies. We're talking about humanness. We're talking about cells. We're talking about life. We're talking about love. And it's just all there in the playing. It's amazing. Wow. Wow, that is so amazing. I, uh, that's A, a high compliment, but B, just like what an amazing creative description of what what goes on in in music. I mean, there's been or, already in this podcast, there's a few things that you've described that I haven't heard described in that way before. It's, uh, oh, no. it's really quite amazing. And I just want to go back to one little thing. Um, yeah. You really did reiterate something, and I've never reached the... Um, uh, the the dizzy heights of success that you have, but especially when you're talking about those early days, because I can identify with this way of being. It seems that, so when you were like in that first era, when I would have seen you on, uh, on MTV and all that kind of stuff, mm. um, you didn't feel particularly successful. Oh no. It, wow. See, that's no, funny. No. I still don't know if I actually ever will feel entirely successful because I think success is measured by so many different things in one mm. lifetime. Mm. Um, like just when you think you've got something leaked, then the world proves to you how wrong you are. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting time. Like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I mean, I burnt myself here yesterday, right? Mm. Um, just accidentally because pride oh. was getting the better of me. Ah. I was, I was, uh, I was doing something with my daughter's hair. I was with a mm. hair tongue and, you know, and, and also, and also because when we, when we're with our children, you know, you're constantly asking yourself, am I actually with my child mm. or am I pretending to be with my child, pretending to be someone's mother whilst my internal thoughts are somewhere else, right? <laughs> well, it's good you're asking that question. <laughs> yeah, well, I do. I ask myself because, um, you know, I, I don't, I always, I always want to check myself because she's such an important being for me. Mm. And, um, and the time that I have to spend with her has often been compromised by my interests with music and mm. travel and life. And, you know, and in this day and age with technical technology, you know, we're constantly interrupted in the middle of moments. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be right in the middle of a moment and oh it's oh excuse me, hang on, sorry, darling. I've just gotta, you know, alter <laughs> that up. Or, you know, you'll be in a moment, she's saying something and someone says, Yeah, calls you from another room. Yeah, hang on. Sorry, what were you saying? And she says, Never mind. Oh, I that's that's just a moment I'll never ever have again. Mm. Oh, I hate that so much. Mm. So anyway, the pride was was that she'd asked me to do her hair. Um and and I was needing to do it the way I thought she would like it rather than the mm. way she was asking for me to mm. do it. Mm. And these are the things that in life will always be the things that um, we remember later on in life, the things <laughs> perhaps, you know, the tiny little pebbles of regret. Mm. Mm. Um, and anyway, and, and again, but the good part of me said to her, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not even asking you, what do you want? What did you want? With and as I was asking, I burnt my hand. It was like uh -huh. almost, it was almost yeah. like this strange sort of, you know, mm. check your head, Kate Soprano. Uh -huh. Don't get proud. Wow. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Well, the, the way that you choose to see that situation, like that could happen to a hundred people and they'd see it all different ways. And yeah. you're choosing to take the lesson from that small little situation to make you a, a better person and also to check in where you're going, you know, whether you, you know, you're thinking to yourself, am I being a good mum here? Or, I mean, that's just evidence well, of your intent. So that's a great thing. Thank you, Ash. Well, I, I think you'd appreciate, and you know, as an artist too, we're given, we're offered pride on a platter. Yeah. We're given it to, to, to gorge from, to eat from, to, Sniff, smell, taste, touch, enjoy, mm. wear the clothes. We feel it every day. We're being admired, mm. you know, from wonderful people who mean it mm. and lavish us with, with love. And, um, but 
then but then we have to measure it with humility and I'm not even saying that it's like you know trying to be all pious and but actually humility is I think is um observing those things that matter uh making sure you uh communicate those things that matter loudly and and often and and note that you'll notice more often than not that those things that matter have very little to do with you Mm, absolutely yeah everything's and, external child uh, other people mm, grandparents family you know mm. anyway. most of them are free too that's well, another little yes. correlation <laughs> and actually silver lining right mm. ash maybe not for you guys but for the bulk generation i think people were full of buying shit mm. and spending aimless hours crawling around chadstons and other things for mm. entertainment yeah and i think that this is going this has actually been the right amount of time to um perhaps get off those toxic simulations mm. absolutely i mean never a true word could be said and i you know like i don't want anyone hearing this to misunderstand we're looking for we're looking for silver linings. We didn't choose to be in no. this situation. So, but yeah, that's a absolutely. massive. I mean, like for me, I'm I'm seeing so many massive um, silver linings at the moment. And you know, it's just that. Oh, you just the phone yeah. went off. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. <clears throat> no, um, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. I mean, I was just. Um, where I know we're really privileged. We live, we can walk to the beach. So we see people, yeah. see people. we're very so lucky. Yeah. Um, and we were seeing, we saw some friends on the beach and uh, one friend who's, you know, she's normally running a, a really big business and, and really going for it and stuff. And we were saying something that keeps being echoed around, which is like, maybe when all of this is over, we should have a, uh, you know, a holiday to a, a yearly kind of like a religious month yeah. you know like a ramadan well, actually, or a nippy day how they have it in bali of like yeah. for a for a to commemorate this time and where you the world turns off and gives the earth a break and stuff for a while you know i think that's actually saner than anything else that could come out of like that <clears throat> I, I in fact i do believe that early days um religions generally came about from what was good for the tribe yeah uh, at least you know, general, I mean, you know, don't, don't, um, well, things to do with hygiene, even wash your hands mm. and, mm. uh, and keep yourself away from eating certain foods. I'm sure that's how the basis of a lot of different religious Absolutely. events have occurred. And you know? planting on, on moon phases and, and all of that. Of the year. Yeah. And, and I come from naturalists. My grandparents were both the forefathers of homeopathy. And really? um, they started a company called Natura, which was then bought commercially later. But they were into um, whole foods and fiber and good wow. guts. Good guts. Um, then I know, really, really. Well, when was that? In 1950. My God. <laughs> in Adelaide. They were part of a small and, and a very. Um, uh, successful community of homeopathists, homeop homeopathics and chiropractics and all sorts right. of stuff. So they were wow. really, um, so I was raised by that kind of tribe and uh, the holistic nature of how, what you're saying should be engaged with internationally. Cause as you know, as you can see, nature will tell you what it needs and mm. it needed a break. Mm. It needed this break. Mm. It's taking a big sigh of relief. You know, I love the skies at the moment with all of the bird song. Mm. And I love the, uh, in fact, I, I was writing poetry this morning again, just wow. about, just about the fact that nature hasn't noticed that there's a crisis. Yeah. And it has. Yeah. It's not a <laughs> crisis that, for nature. <laughs> no, yeah. no. And so, um, so then we're, we're, we're brought back to mother, you know, and I love mm. that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's, uh, I mean, there, there's so much positive to come out of this. Um, I just wanted to ask you one thing because my computer yeah. is starting to stuff up. I <laughs> know, oh, actually, well, yeah, that's right. If it's, uh, we'll, we'll probably run out of time shortly. So here we go. Um, yeah. My screen's going. Um, <coughs> oh, no. It went once before. So if it does okay. go, if it starts to really go, I'm going to hit end meeting so that this saves. No worries. And then I'll call you and back. Then I'll, <laughs> no worries, darling. Yeah. But, um, 
thank you um, so much. If I have to hit end, thank you so much for this podcast. It's been so amazing. Oh, um, I love it. But, I love but, talking to you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think we got so much in common on on this um, kind of level. And I wanted to ask you about: Do you have what would be your you you know what soulful conversations is all about? And you know, a big part of it is mind mindset. So what would you say, recommend to people listening to this to put in their mindset, either daily practices or just some interesting thoughts to put in their Mm. mindset to get through this time? Um, Without sounding dry, I think the thing that has been, especially for creative minds, um, is, is routine. Yes. Totally. Like wake up and nominate certain periods of time to get things done by or, or to have started something by or, and then finish it. Mm. Or if you're not planning on finishing it, uh, put it on the bonfire and burn it. <laughs> don't, don't, I think that there's uh, in, in this, commu- in this tiny little small space and in this time with family to find yourself you know, insulated by all your creative debris, um, it'll make you stodgy and like un, unperceived, like imperceptive. And I think we need to perceive what's going on. I started dreaming a lot better uh, in this time, and I've started my my perception seems to be improving a lot more. I was doing a little bit of time traveling recently, going back and visiting my grandma and visiting places I'd lived and smelling what it was wow. like growing up. I just thought, and I haven't given myself an opportunity mm. to explore that so and mm. i think the only way you can is if that that in, all that cotton wool of creation just mm. either do something with it or burn it wow mm. and then start the next day with a fresh page a mm. new tube of paint mm. get something done yeah yeah i yeah. often say that i uh, like i think that is so amazing and the once again the way you've put it is so amazing but when people ask you know um about creativity or songwriting or something it's like actually sometimes give yourself an opportunity to create more often it's not like something Mm. you need to put into it if you have a routine where you say okay Mm. i'm going to get up for the next 30 days i'm going to get up and write a song whatever it may be you decide Mm. is important to you you're more likely actually to come up with that amazing creative song than it just it doesn't just turn creativity is a habit and then the magic comes. Yes, exactly right. Yeah, it doesn't just turn up That's, out of the blue. You should make a t-shirt out of that. I want that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and what about for everyday people if they're not doing anything? Well, I think that they should creative. use that metaphor. No, I think they should use the routine as a metaphor they, because they are all artists. Whether it's getting up and getting dressed is an art form in itself. You have to choose what you want to wear. Yeah, that includes like, and that that's how do you service your identity by doing that? Choose the mm. colours you want to wear. If you're feeling mm. a bit low, wear something white. Mm. If you're feeling a bit slow, you know, um, wear something that's a bit cooler, and you need to run around a bit more. You know, mm. yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I I also think obviously, and for this time now, for mental health reasons, it's essential. It's essential to keep a journal or something to communicate your thoughts. Um, knowing that sometimes not everyone wants to hear all of your subjective universe all the time. And certainly uh, with teenagers and other people in and around the house, I'm aware that I'm having to be an example and yet I'm also a person Mm. and I have my own internal universe that's going on. Mm. That's so what I try to do is I either write it down or I, um, or I exorcise it with music, which is a handy tool. But you can mm. do it by mowing the lawn. You mm. can run a bath. You can take that time out mm. of an ordinary cycle. I've just say so just before we go, I've got to show you this. Now this is my. I just saw a note that my daughter has left me. It says, "Dear Mama, I'm so forever grateful for you. You make every day fun and filled with unordinary madness." <laughs> <laughs> which i love you for oh wow just found that just down next to my light wow that's I'm nice madness. i think i might write a song about that today oh uh-huh. that's so cute that's so nice she's that's a, a beautiful writer yeah 
Oh, wow. That's it. How old is your daughter? She's 16. Yeah, right. Cool. It sounds like you guys yeah. have got an amazing relationship. Yeah, we we definitely know we're two very different people. And because of that, um, neither of us expect unnecessary things from each other. Mm. Wow. Meaning, well, really... you know what I mean? Like I actually, I, I know her now. I can see the shape. I know who she is as a mm. person. I don't, I don't labor her with any sort of inheritance mm. of me or mom or anything like that. I just, she, mm. she's such a good thing. She's so sweet. So kind. Oh my mm. God. Mm. Good person. Wow. Wow. There's a lot of wisdom coming from her mum. That's this. This has been an absolutely amazing podcast. Thank you. Oh, I love so it. Much. Thank you. Yeah, love it. Thank We're you. We're gonna get to do some music again soon. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's jam. Let's make that Wilburys pod. <laughs> no. Well, we can do that, but let's go on tour. I want to tour yeah. with you. Yes, that would be amazing. Yes. That would be awesome. Come on. We'll go and we'll go and film a podcast while we're filming everywhere around the country. Around That's the a world. great idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you so much. Love you, Ash. You Look too. Love yourself. Bye, My Kate. love to you and the family. Yeah, thank you.